Hi friends, it's Miss Sherry here for Christ Church Children's Ministry. Thank you for being with me today. And we have been learning all about Jesus and his ministry. In the last couple of weeks, we learned that Jesus gave the Sermon on the Mount. He was way up high on a mountainside because now crowds had been getting to form around him and he needed to get up where everybody could see and hear him teach about what it's like to be a part of God's kingdom and how important it is how we feel and think on the inside just as much as it is to act and treat others on the outside. Because our worldly view today is all about what we look like on the outside. But Jesus says, oh no, it's so much more important about how you feel about what you do and what you think about what you do. All what's on the inside, just as much, if not more than what you show on the outside. And last week, we learned what it takes to follow Jesus, that it is not easy. That Jesus asked his disciples to pick up their cross and follow him. They had to give up, sacrifice the lives as they knew them, all their family and their friends to follow Jesus. Just like it today, that we may have to make sacrifices. That following Jesus, life isn't guaranteed to be wonderful. That we will have suffering in our lives, but that we know it is worth it to follow him. That we will spend eternity with him. When we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, and we have God in our hearts, that the Holy Spirit will be within us and help guide us in how to live our lives. Well, friends, today we are going to continue to hear what Jesus is teaching us while he is here on earth and how we can better follow God. Will you all bow your heads and pray with me today? Loving and faithful Father. Thank you so much for Jesus, for how he came to show us the way. God, thank you for these friends who have gathered here today to learn from you. God, we are blessed to be loved by you. God, we want to be a blessing unto you. Help us pay attention to the story today and what you are speaking to each one of us in a special way, we pray. And all God's children said, amen. Well, thank you for praying with me today, friends. And of course, you know, I got a special question for you all. Do any of you have a phone, a cell phone, right? I bet a lot of hands went up, some not yet. But I bet you've used one, right? What do you use the cell phone for? To text or call your friends, right? to communicate to others that might not be right next to you. Or maybe, let's face it, they might be right next to you. We use a phone to communicate to others. Today, we're going to learn what Jesus teaches us about how to communicate and talk to God. How we don't need a phone. It's not that complicated to talk to God. It's really quite easy. And he teaches us exactly how we should do that. Let's check out today's story. As we get to our story, let's review our big picture question and answer that we've been learning. What did Jesus teach when he was on earth? Jesus taught about God and his kingdom. He taught that all scripture is about him. Jesus came to earth to live a perfect life die on the cross for our sins, and rise again to defeat death. He also came to show us a perfect example of who God is. His teaching helps us know much more about God and what God's plans are for the world. Jesus helped explain how all scripture 
points to him. Jesus had just finished praying when one of his disciples said, Lord, teach us to pray. So Jesus told them, when you pray, say, Father, your name be honored as holy. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread and forgive us our sins, for we ourselves also forgive everyone in debt to us. And do not bring us into temptation. Then Jesus told them a story. Imagine one of you goes to a friend at midnight and says, friend, let me borrow three loaves of bread because a friend of mine has traveled to visit me and I don't have anything to offer him. The friend shouts from inside his house, go away, my family is in bed. I don't want to get up to help you. Even though the man does not want to help his friend, he will get up and give his friend what he needs because he asked boldly. Jesus told the story to teach the disciples about prayer. He said, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. Jesus asked, does any father when his son asks for a fish give him a snake instead? Or if the son asks for an egg, does the father give him a scorpion? Jesus said that fathers who are sinners know how to give good gifts to their children. God is an even greater father. He gives the Holy Spirit to those who ask. Jesus told another story, a parable, to teach the disciples to pray without giving up. In a town was a judge who did not care about God or people. Over and over, a widow went to the judge and asked him to protect her from wrongdoing. The judge did not want to help, but after a while he said, I will give this widow what she wants so she does not keep bothering me. Jesus pointed out that the unjust judge did what was right because the widow did not give up. When people cry out to God day and night, will he ignore them? Jesus asked. No, he will quickly make things right. Jesus wanted his followers to have faith that doesn't give up. Jesus taught us to pray. Because of Jesus, we can pray to God as a father and ask for what we need. We can trust that God is good and loving, and we can count on Him to do what is right. Let's all read our Bible memory verse together. I have spoken these things to you while I remain with you, but the Counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and remind you of everything I have told you. John 14, 25 to 26. I hope you all are trying to memorize this verse as Jesus taught all kinds of wonderful things about God, his kingdom, and the scriptures. It's more than any of us could remember or obey on our own. This passage reminds us that everyone who believes in Jesus has the Holy Spirit living within them. He helps us remember what Jesus taught so that we can obey out of love. The story today is all about our personal communication with God. So let me ask you, do you feel you know how to pray? Do you feel comfortable if somebody says, how do you pray? Are you not sure how to do it or what to say? Would you be comfortable in front of a large group? A lot of people don't know what to say, don't know how to pray. That's why I love this story because it's not uncommon to hear me say, you can pray wherever you are. You don't need special words. You don't even need to close your eyes. You don't need to quote scripture. God wants you to talk to him like he's your best friend. Just like you would talk to a parent or, or a good friend, or maybe even your pet. Someone you can say anything to and know you're not going to get any 
judgment back, that they're going to love you no matter what you say. So you can find today's story in the New Testament, way in the back of your Bibles, in the book of Matthew and Luke. And if you go in the book of Matthew, chapter 6, starting at verse 7, I'm going to read you what the Bible says. It says, when you pray, don't babble on and on as people of other religions do. They think their prayers are answered merely by them repeating their words again and again. Don't be like them. For your father knows exactly what you need even before you ask him. I wanted to make sure I read that to you because God wants you to ask him. He wants to be a part of your life. Don't go, oh, I don't pray because God already knows. God wants to know. So in the Lord's Prayer, let me read you what it says. It says, our Father in heaven, may your name be kept holy. This is a big one in our society, really big one in my house, because I know that I want to do this first line no matter what. In our world today, people say God for everything. It's not special. God's name is to be kept holy. Now there's a challenge for you. Keep his name holy. Only say it when you're praying and talking to him and glorifying him. It goes on to say, may your kingdom Come soon. May your will be done on earth. Now, when you're praying, this is a big one. We pray and talk to God first, right? We give thanks to him first. We ask for his will to be done in our lives. Oh, will your kingdom come soon? Will you come back, Jesus, we pray. And then we pray for what we need. Give us today the food we need. Many different versions says our daily bread. That means the food we need today. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Ooh, that's a big one when you think about it. Forgive others who do wrong to you because you want God to forgive you for when you don't follow him exactly the way you should. And let and don't let us yield to temptation. Oh, it's so easy to go to what we know might not be right to do. <laughs> Lord, help us not, not be tempted by that. Help us to always do what we know is right and rescue us from that, from that temptation if we do follow that path. The Lord's Prayer, Jesus says, is just a demonstration on how we should live, right? How we should be dependent on our faith. We should rely on God, he says. The Lord's Prayer is just an example on how we should pray and glorify Him at the beginning of our prayers. Give thanks to Him and ask for Him to come back for His kingdom, His will to be done in our lives. Pray for others that you know need God to be in their lives and to help them. And then pray for yourself, Jesus says. This is how we should pray. But I love the stories, the parables that Jesus uses in the story, right? The parent, right? I was using this for, for my, my preschoolers today, right? If you asked your parent for a fish, would they give you a snake, <laughs> right? It's not the same thing, right? Does your parent know, does the one person who takes care of you know how to give you a gift that you would love? 
That's what the Bible says. A parent knows this. A parent knows what their child would love and like. Same with God. God is our heavenly father. He knows exactly what we need and what we want. But how about the other stories, right? About the stories of the friend going to the other friend. I need some bread, right? He's waking him up in the middle of the night and the friend's like, look, <laughs> I'm already in bed. I'm not coming down. I'm not unlocking the door. I'm not going to help you out. It's late. But you keep on knocking. The friend is eventually going to go, here you go. Here's your bread. Go, 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 go. Right? Persistent. The widow asking the judge to help her. Please, please help me. And the judge is like, I really don't want to. But she doesn't give up. God rewards persistence. It's in the Bible. Keep praying. Now let me ask you, do you think God answers all your prayers exactly the way you want it? No, no, he might not because God is going to do what glorifies him and is good for us, right? He knows what's best for you. Oh, this is a hard one. He's not going to always answer your prayer the way you want. How about those unanswered prayers, Miss Sherry? Persistent. His timing is best. We can't see the big picture. God knows what is best. So keep praying when you've been praying about something. Keep praying. Persistence will be rewarded, Jesus says. Keep praying to him. Don't stop. Don't give up on God for he hears you. You can pray to him anywhere, anytime, about anything. He goes with you. You don't need a phone. You don't need a cell tower. He can hear you no matter where you are. And when we believe in him, we trust him. Our faith is dependent on him. And we believe in him knowing he knows what's best for us. And when we have the Holy Spirit in our hearts, because we believe in him, our lives, even though they might be hard, we know he loves us. We know he's there for us. Even when, like a parent, they do make decisions that we don't like because they know what's best for us. Will you all bow your heads and pray with me today? Heavenly Father, thank you that you hear all our prayers. Help us to trust you. Trust you to know what is best for us. For we often think we know what is best for us. Help us to see you at work in our lives. Thank you, God, for loving us. Loving us so that you sent your son to teach us how to talk to you. God, help us to do that each and every day in every way. God, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for my friends who have gathered here, for they want to know you and love you. God, help us to learn how to do that better and to bless you, Lord, for we are so thankful for you and what you have given to us, we pray. And all God's children said, amen. Well, thank you for being with me today, friends, and learning how to pray. I pray you will pray this week and you will see God answering your prayers. Don't forget, our worship songs are coming up next.